Do you want to know how to tell if this Elon Musk Twitter thing really is about free speech? I've got three simple ways for you to tell for sure. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it pretty amazing when I see the reaction of so many people on the sale of Twitter. Obviously, I understand the position of those who run at the board. They want to make money and to do so, they need to cater for the masses of the online community. They want the perception of being progressive, but not too much. Maybe left, but with the perceived center still in view. Obviously, they've failed this dismally. They've gone too far, and they've been secretly willing not only to influence or control the narrative, but they've gone as far to censor and delete information. I mean, what is this, North Korea? Now that's the board. But to me, it speaks volumes that millions of people who use this platform are so fragile. They're scared of hearing a differing opinion. They're literally scared of free speech. They're obviously hypocritical too. They're quite fine for that to happen when the board was left, but now Elon Musk wants to take over. They're now saying how dangerous it is to have censorship. I mean, if that's not hypocrisy, what is that? But this is particularly sad for a nation or culture that started with such a strong basis and claims to champion free speech. But what should be more concerning is that the censoring and cancelling of people, people's accounts get cancelled, just knocked off. It's happening over things that are factually true. It's not people inciting riots or hatred or, or racism. It's people saying factual statements. That never that should have been allowed to happen under, under any circumstances. circumstances. It's like communism. It's like communism. communism. That, is that is crazy. crazy. But here's the three ways to see if he actually values free speech. Now, the first one's pretty simple. It's pretty logical, might not even be worth stating. You'll see it happening straight away. You might even have seen it happen before you listen to this. Free speech will demand that Twitter restore all previously cancelled accounts if they didn't break the law. They'll be re reinstated. I mean, it's pretty logical, right? You were, you were banned, you were cancelled for saying something they didn't agree with. Well, now this free speech, your account will be reinstated. Welcome back, hordes of dissenters. Oh, please, everyone but Trump. No matter whether you love Trump or hate him, his account will be back on Twitter if Elon Musk values free speech, genuinely. So will lots of other people that you may disagree with. Obviously, there's going to be a drawback that there'll be more people with stupidity, so with rudeness and deliberate hoax, like false information. But that is a small price to pay. As annoying as these people are, they need help too. They've got their own issues going on. They need attention or whatever. They're generally easy for fairly easy to spot as well. But at least we should get a more complete picture, a more rounded set of information, a more informed debate, and a more balanced centre. So that's number one. Pretty, pretty clear, pretty easy. Number two, does Elon Musk really care about free speech? Now, you might be able to debate this one. Will he cancel the Twitter account that tracks his private jet? Now, some of you might think this is a privacy or confidential or security issue, and, then, and so he has a different set of reasons why he might cancel it. Um, I know personally I definitely would not want someone tracking or stalking me. But if the law allows it, if it's not illegal, then free speech would demand that Musk doesn't cancel that account once he has full control. Only time's going to tell. Is that account still up? Well, let's see. Um, number three. This is the one where we get down to the real test, but it's going to take time. If Twitter stays on the Apple App Store and it stays on Google Play in the months or years to come, you know that Twitter is still not free speech. Apple and Google are opposed to free speech and they will not allow true free speech apps on their respective store, stores. This should concern you a lot. Um, if you want more information on this, you should go over to Gab and listen to Andrew Gort Torber's uh, journey trying to start a free speech alternative to Twitter. He saw this going on years ago and said, I'm going to start something where people don't get cancelled. This is worrying. We can't get cancelled. It's hard to believe the journey of the resistance, the pushback he got. Now, he's now got what I think is the best free speech platform, um, gab.com, go over there, have a look. Um, it's incredible, but why did he get such a big pushback? His journey showed clearly, it's not just the app stores, 
He was harassed and cancelled by the banks, by payment processors, by domain registrars, by hosting providers, mainstream, or he calls them the legacy media. Um, every link in the information chain is locked down, is controlled. The narrative is controlled. So everything you see, everything you hear, um, and everything you read is controlled, and now you think you're getting information that's free. But they're all opposed to free speech. Totally locked down. And people think religion's controlling. Now, I'm going to go on a tangent. Religion can be controlling. Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, there's stacks of cults that are very controlling. Some will even force you to disown your family if, if they don't agree with you. Now, most religions have a basis in what's called works. You do X, Y, and Z. Now, some of them say A, B, C as well, to earn God's favour. From the Mayans to the Egyptians to the Romans to the Catholics to the JWs, all the ceremonies look different, but the basis is the same in virtually all of them. Islam, they're all, you know. Jesus came along. Now, he threw a spanner in the works. He said, there's no way you can earn your way to God. He said, he, God's so pe perfect. His law is so high. His, his standard is so high that we can never attain it. We've all sinned. We're under God's wrath. We're doomed. But he didn't leave it there. He said, because God the Father didn't want us, all of humanity, to be lost, lost for good, he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to pay our debt. So those who turn from their sin, trust Jesus, are saved. Not by doing the right thing, that's religion, but by trusting in what Jesus has done. So I, now I personally think that this is the one and only thing that can save our culture. Now, I want to reiterate, it's never happened in all of history. No culture has ever got to where we got to in 1970 and managed to come back and still survive as a culture for a hundred years. But I believe if we repented of our sin, of what God calls sin, not what we think is sin. You know, you ask someone, oh, are you a good person? Everyone says yes. As a dealer, I used to say yes. Someone who used to rip people off and live with uh, women in sin and all that sort of stuff, I used to steal and, and take drugs regularly and, and I won't incriminate myself too much. I used to think I was a good person. We looked to other people, oh yeah, that, now that's, but God says, you tell one lie, you're a sinner. He says what sin is. He says, if you look at someone with lust or have sex before marriage, you're a sinner. That's adultery. Now you might go, oh, that's a wowzer position, but you might be surprised to know that having sex before marriage is one of the things that ensures a society, a culture will decline. Sex before marriage matters. Why? I believe because God set it in place. He set it as the bedrock for a nation. Marriage is for one person for life. Sex is great in marriage. You have sex before marriage. As a culture, if you accept that, it's one of the indicators that your culture cannot survive. The second one is monogamy. Once you're married, you stay faithful to that woman. Now, if we're going to live according to what God says, then I believe that we can come back from the brink of destruction. But without Jesus, that's it. I believe we're doomed. All of this should horrify you. What is it that the big players have to control so completely and securely? Why can't we have access to information? Isn't it communism when the government tries to control what we think or what we have access to in the way of information? So, that, I mean, right now, in 2022, the truth is you have no ability to get ac accurate or trustworthy news on anything. The war in the Ukraine. Is it really a big bad bully bombing inhumanely, causing as much death and mayhem as he can? Is it really? Is, is this what's playing out, what you believed would happen if Russia... The massive Russia, with all its weapons, attacked Ukraine. What did you think was going to happen? Personally, I would have thought a few days of incredibly intense bombing and then a few hundred thousand people dead and it's all over. A bit like the Afghan withdrawal. There probably wasn't as much death there, but Russia's huge. But instead, on one day, we've got total fear about COVID all around the world. It's being reported on every news channel around the world. And then instantly the narrative switches from COVID to the Ukraine. And we get news stories about how bad Russia is. But the evidence of this war is little media posts of 
fake news. A tank running over a car. Turns out later it was a Ukrainian tank, not a Russian one. The Snake Island heroes. Zelensky himself talked about them. No, that was a fake story too. They didn't die. They were captured and then returned to Ukraine in a prisoner exchange. The warplanes uh, that flew over from Russia. No, that was an air show from years earlier. The explosions. No, that wasn't even in the Ukraine and it was years er earlier. There was numerous false statements continually being rehashed by the media as if it's true. What are the actual facts? Now, we know there are bio labs in the Ukraine. Is this relevant? What are they there for? What about NATO's backflip on how close they'll be to Russia? If I was Russia, if I was leading Russia, if that was my country, I'd be concerned as well. Do we as the world believe they even have a right to defend themselves? If they're as obviously bad as what we're being told, why isn't the death toll a hundred times as much? And why has no one else stepped in to defend the Ukraine or fight back if it's so obvious? The fact is no one knows what the truth really is. The narrative is being controlled. I've got here in my notes a lot of the mainstream reporting has been shown to be completely false. Most of it. Most of it has. But you won't find that on your news programs. It's all controlled platforms. You'll see fake news. Then when it's dispro disproved later on, you won't hear the retraction and you won't see anything else. The narrative they want has already been uh, conveyed to you. You believe it. Their mission's accomplished. They move on to the next fake story. Again, um, there's a great video. I'll, I'll put a link on, on Gab. Again, you won't be able to watch it where you're watching this. You won't be able to watch it on... Well, maybe you will be on Twitter soon. I'm not sure. But any information that doesn't fit the narrative is just cancelled and deleted. About COVID-19, the COVID jabs, what are the facts? No one really knows why. The narrative's being controlled. Doctors research, anything that doesn't line up with the government or the leftist narrative is simply deleted. Fear controls people. COVID-19 was a great fear cam campaign. When, it's, when there's truth found later on, there's no reporting, nothing. They try to claim they follow the science. How absurd, they just delete the opposite view. That's not science. Science will withhold scrutiny. Another question, would Biden be president if Twitter had not deleted the Hunter Biden laptop story. Insisting it was false news, they deleted it instantly. But now it's been proved to be absolutely true and probably only the tip of the iceberg. There's proof coming to light that Joe Biden directly lied, stating he had no knowledge of Hunter's business dealings. But now, emails show he clearly did. He paid off a million dollars of uh, Hunter's debts, a million Australian dollars, 800,000 US, whatever it was including to the Chinese. Now, that's a pretty big deal if you're in America and voting for someone. But now it's too late. And the leftist news, the, the legacy news networks, still fail to report on it, honestly. Now, there's thousands of examples, but the media is not trustworthy. There's a huge chasm between the left and the right, and each media outlet is not reporting on the stories that don't fit their narrative or support their position. But what that's doing, there's a bigger problem. It's throwing fuel on a divided society. It's decreasing our rational thought. People aren't able to think rationally anymore. They're making decisions, and heavens forbid, they're making laws on emotive reasons. That's ridiculous. If there's a perceived victim, then someone must be a perpetrator. No, someone's been offended, and that's okay. I get offended all the time, and that's okay. You can disagree with me. You can criticise me. That's okay. That's part of life. That's part of the world. And if we know the truth, we're not going to worry too much about what other people think or say. It's decreasing our rational thought. It's leading to a decline in debate and a loss of truth itself. So is Elon Musk trying to help this? Is what, he do, what he's doing going to be effective? Will he stick to his guns and get Twitter cancelled off all the app stores? Or will he toe the line and actually start to censor as well under the perceived notion of free speech? Or will they change their terms? Apple and Google, not likely. Will all the leftists, the snowflakes, those who can't handle a different opinion, just leave Twitter and it collapses? Who knows? 
I personally hope it's good for helping honest debate and getting closer to the truth. I doubt it will be. Only time will tell. Peace, guys.